Lord God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all of my <coughs> By your Spirit, show us the things we ought to do, and give us the grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Look, 
You serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Then such the fast that I chose, a day to humble oneself. It is to bow down the head like a bulrush, and to lie in sackcloth and ashes. Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the first time that I chose to loose the bonds of the justice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin, then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, the glory of the Lord shall be in your guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. He shall call for help, and he will say, Here I am. Word of God, word of light. Today is Psalm, Psalm 112. I asked the congregation to read the uh, bold print. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. But they will never be ashamed. The righteous will be happy and everlasting. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see the entire heart of their They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The second reading today comes from 1 Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom but with a demonstration of the spirit of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do not speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of the ages or the rulers of the age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understand this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, no ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God did revealed to us in the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows and what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within. So also, no one comprehends what is truly God, except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God so that we may understand the gifts bestowed upon us by God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but it's thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works, and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I've come to abolish the law of the prophets. I've come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, unless until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth. Well, today's salt has a bad rap, doesn't it? We often hear about salt's danger. The average American consumes 67% more salt each day than we should. The USDA guidelines recommend less than a teaspoon a day. Reducing our intake of salt, they say, will reduce our risk for high blood pressure, stroke, heart disease, stomach, and kidney problems, will drastically reduce our nation's health care costs. Well, I say the February main American heart month, this is a good thing for all of us to remember. However, I am grateful for rock salt to clear salt, to clear ice and snow from our sidewalks, wherever we walk, and the roads we drive. Once you've fallen and been injured on snow or ice, you appreciate that rock salt all the more. My wife is a zealot to get our sidewalks and driveways clean because she does not ever want to fall again. The salt mine and the pile of salt near, near Mount Morris along I-390 South of Rochester from whence our road rock salt comes, that is truly a remarkable sight. And as you all know, salt has a key role in the history and economic development of our region. Because long before the promise of Micron and Interchips, long before carrier air conditioning and even before the massive government subsidized project completed in 1825, the year even now, which was first disparaged as Clinton's folly and Clinton's ditch, but which spurred both agricultural and urban economic development, population growth, trade, travel, and tourism, and religious, intellectual, cultural change for Syracuse and all of upstate New York, even before this year even now. There was salt. Today, Syracuse is known as the Salt City. Before the year 1800, over 200 years ago, two Revolutionary War veterans settled by Onondaga Lake and the manufacture of salt. The region then began to build up and prosper. Salt Point was renamed Salina. The village of Liverpool in 1830 was incorporated and took its name from the city in England which was the center of a region famous for salt production. In 1862, just before the Civil War, Syracuse was the nation's largest supplier of salt. The Erie Canal, Canal by then was known as the ditch that salt built. And some even argue that the North won the Civil War because of Syracuse salt. The salt didn't have any salt, and couldn't buy any, and so they could preserve their meat and food rations. And along the way, 
Syracuse soft rubber is discovered, which began to sow in wild potatoes and soft wine, and that created those soft potatoes. Today, salt is abundant and common and fairly inexpensive, yet for much of history, salt was rare, hard to obtain, and precious. The word salary even relates to the Latin word for salt. It refers to wages paid to Roman soldiers so they could buy their salt. Even today, a good worker is said to be worth his or her salt, right? Wars were fought over salt. Queen Isabella financed Christopher Columbus from income with income from salt mines. Oppressive government taxes on salt were a cause of both the French Revolution, Gandhi's civil obedience that led to independence for India. So when Jesus called his disciples and you and me, the salt of the earth, what is he saying? He's not saying saying that you are a very good, kind, and decent person. Jesus is declaring that you are valuable and precious. You are precious enough for God to go to war over against the forces and powers of sin and death and evil. Precious enough to give up his son's life for the cross to rescue you when you and me back. That's the first thing to know about Saul. You are precious and valuable. Second thing to know is how salt was used. Then is now salt was an ingredient on food. The word salad also comes from the ancient Roman practice of connection with salt and the ancient Roman practice of salting green leafy vegetables. Now notice Jesus did not say you are the pepper of the earth. Pepper draws attention to itself, doesn't it? Salt's purpose in food is not to draw attention to itself, but rather in helpful amounts to season, to enhance and highlight, highlight the food of flavors. Salt does no good in piles or boxes by itself. Same way with the disciples of the church. Our purpose is not to stockpile our resources and live for ourselves within these walls. Jesus' disciples and our church finds its true mission and purpose when we are sprinkled and spread out to nurture and improve and bring out the goodness and best in others, in the community around us, in the world, in nature, so that we can draw attention not to ourselves, but to God's goodness and glory in others, creation of the world around. Maybe even spread and sprinkle a few apple pies out in the community around us, or honey, as I discovered. Salt was used as a preservative to keep food from spoiling, sprinkling the meat, dried fish, and vegetables. Newborn babies were washed in salt water for cleansing, to kill germs, and to preserve the child's life. We might say then our purpose as followers of Jesus is to preserve and save life, to improve and extend life wherever and however we can. The lives of individual people and the lives of our culture, society, economics, the community around. So how do we do that? Save and preserve life? Well, Jesus says he came not to abolish the law of the prophets, but to fulfill them. So let's look at the prophet Isaiah today. The fast God wants, Isaiah says, is to loosen the bonds of injustice to set the oppressed free, to feed the hungry, to welcome the homeless poor even into our own homes, or the refugee and immigrant into our homeland, to clothe the naked, to meet the, the needs of those who are afflicted. Use these things, Isaiah says, as the, and the text continues in the verses after the book read, do these things, Isaiah says, as God's people, and God's light will shine. God will heal and make you strong. God will rebuild your ruins. You will be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets that are made again safe and violent and good to live in. The Romans believe salt was the purest of elements because it came from pure things came from the sun and the sea. 
Jews use salt to purify their offerings. The Arabic word for salt and the word for agreement or treaty are the same word. And when contracts or covenants were made, each participant would eat food containing salt as a sign and pledge that the words were made and those treaties were pure, that they would keep those words. Jesus wants us to be the salt of the earth, a true and faithful witness to God's word made real in Jesus, to be God's pure and steadfast forever love. Salt was also used for healing. Soldiers rubbed salt into their battle wounds. The salt stung and hurt to stop the bleeding and save lives. And we can heal through praying, caring, and working for healing of people and body and spirit and in their broken relationships. Sometimes that might also mean confronting people with their sins and like salt and wounds that will sting. But with words and deeds of forgiveness, kindness, comfort, and mercy to follow, the heals. Chosen by God, baptized, declared precious when you were baptized, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You as individuals, you together as a congregation, are the salt of the earth. The world definitely desperately needs the salt that we and our congregation can be. Jesus, as I said, sends us to be sprinkled and dispersed in the world around, the world with our neighbors, where we work, in our schools, homes, in our play. Be the salt of justice and peace that confronts others and sings when needed. Be the salt of forgiveness and mercy, goodness and blessing. You are the salt, Jesus died to save and win for God and for God's world. The salt God sends to flavor, to heal, to preserve, to improve the world around us. Just as it takes only a little salt to make a big difference, you and I are precious and valuable, and we can make all God's purifying difference. God's cleansing, healing, preserving difference. No matter how big or many we are, we as persons, we as a congregation, people of Emmanuel together in this place can be God's presence, have been God's presence, and will be. There's no ifs, buts, or maybes about it. It's God's declaration. It's Jesus' word of confidence. Jesus simply says, you are the salt of the earth. You. Amen. Amen. Let us rise and sing the Lord of his love and humble service.
together to confess the faith into which we were baptized. I believe in God, the Father of our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, and the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the earth. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated in the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Deal or be seated. Okay. Call together to follow Jesus through Christ the church, the world, and all of me. Mighty God, call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and action. Give the church everywhere courage to repent for the ways we have calibrated the practice of injustice. Merciful God, greater God, inspire our wonder and your creation, the light of dawn to the beauty of the dark night, sustain the unseen depths of the oceans, to the plants, and the animals we know well, bring healing to lands and communities experiencing natural disasters. Merciful God, teaching Lord, instruct the powerful in their ways. Provide upright leadership in business and industries of workers, not oppressed, but treated fairly. Throughout the world, inspire voters to raise up politicians to lead your call for nations to practice righteousness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Merciful Lord, loosen the bonds of injustice in our midst. Grant peace to endless quarrels. Put an end to hunger. Break every yoke of oppression. Shelter all who flee abuse in their homes or violence in their communities. Satisfy those afflicted in any way, including those who grieve, especially those who name before you aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God. <laughs> Shape our congregation to be salt for the earth. Give us delight in your commandments that we are generous with those in need. Make us steadfast in our trust in you, ready with tangible mercy and compassion for our neighbors. Bless our newly called Pastor Tanya and her preparations for service here. Bless us as we prepare to work together with her. Merciful God. <laughs> The cross and resurrection bring redemption from sin and death. We praise you for all whose unshaken faith in Christ shines forth and their witness. Keep them in our remembrance and bring us with them into the kingdom of heaven. Merciful God, we, our prayer. we bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trust in your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. He turns to those around him, not the words of signs of peace, but the words of the Lord. Holy God, gracious and merciful, we bring forth fruit of the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, though we know your care. 
We prepare us how to feast to the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior, Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, to our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. So, while the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. <laughs> Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. The night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this with remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. Christ given for you. Body of 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 Christ given for you. 
Christ in you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Let us pray. For oh God, we give you thanks that you have set it before us as the body and blood of your Son. 
By your spirit, strengthen us to serve all that need and give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Sending song is O God of life. Yes. 